Welcome everybody, I'm Saban Adams and I'm back with another quick tip. And in this tip, we're gonna be looking at how to use the different map options in your Prisma schema. That way you can name your database table and columns in your generated Prisma client differently than they are in the underlying database. And the reason this is useful is if you're coming from an existing database and you have tables and columns, but you don't necessarily like the names or maybe they're not following conventions that you'd like to follow, you can actually rename them directly in your Prisma client. So let's see how that works here. I'm gonna go into my Prisma schema and I'll create a user model. And what this is gonna represent is a user table in our database, which is a SQLite database. And it has two columns. It has an ID and a name column. So this will be a table named user with two columns named ID and name. So let's do Prisma DB push. This will actually apply our Prisma schema to our database. And then within this terminal, I'm gonna output the current schema of our database. So we can see that we have a user table now and it has an ID and a name column. So that's fantastic. That's exactly what we wanted. If we go over to some code, we can actually do prisma.user. And so we can see that we have this user object and then let's do find first. And then within this find first, we can select out a couple of columns and we see that we have a couple of options. We have ID and name. So these are the options that we provided in our Prisma schema, and that all looks great. But then we come upon the scenario. What if we are starting off with a database that already exists? Maybe it's some legacy database, and you're naming conventions before. Um, you either weren't following conventions or you want to change them up. So maybe instead of, uh, maybe your underlying database's table name is users plural instead of your user. And you want to use user in your code, but you don't want to necessarily go in and change your database tables names because that's a lot of work. Well, instead, what you can do is you can use this at, at map attribute and you can type users here. So what this is going to say is that your current database has a table named users, but in Prisma client, you want to call it user. So you're just mapping this user model to the users table in the underlying database. So to see what this actually does, let's push our schema again, and I'll output the schema here. So this is showing the current state of our database's schema, and what we could see here is that the underlying database table's name is now users, and we still have our ID and name columns. But in our code, this still looks great. Prisma.user is still valid, uh, instead of Prisma.users, which would not be what we wanted. So that looks good. And what we could do next is we can actually do the same thing with a column. So let's say in our underlying database, this name column is actually called first name, but within our code, we wanna use dot name. You can do that using the at map attribute. Notice that there's only one at sign that signifies that we're working with a field name rather than a table name. And I'll go ahead and write first name here. And then like we did before, I will regenerate Prisma client and push the changes to our database and I'll output the schema again so we could see what changed and we still have this users table because of our at, at map attribute and then we have our ID column but now we also have this first name column and that replaced name like we had before so yep we got first name here and that looks good but let's go look at the code for it if you go into your select over here and do control space what you're gonna see is that you still have the same options you had before, ID and name. And that's because we mapped this name field to the underlying first name field. So we still get to use name in the code, which is what we wanted. That looks a little bit cleaner. So like I mentioned before, this can be super useful if you're coming in from a existing database, maybe a legacy database that has a lot of data and would be a lot of work to actually go in and change. Maybe it would require you to change a lot of code or maybe change a lot of queries and it would just be way too much overhead. So this gives you a very simple way to get started with Prisma without having to worry about those. So I hope this helped you a lot and thank you for watching.